In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, Scott died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. On the day of his baptism, Scott put on Christ. In the day of Christ's coming, may he be clothed in glory. In baptism, Scott received the sign of the cross. May he now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. In life, in his priesthood, Scott cherished the gospel of Christ and preached it with great fervor. May Christ now greet him with these words of eternal life. Come, blessed of my Father. Our brother Scott, our brother Scott shared in the priesthood of Jesus Christ, leading God's people in prayer and worship. Bring him now into your presence when he will take his place in the heavenly liturgy. of the Society of Jesus, the University of Scranton, and the family of Reverend Scott Pilars. I would like to welcome all of you to this Mass this morning, those of you who are present and those who are viewing this by way of live streaming. I would like to extend a special word of welcome to Bishop Joseph Bambera, Bishop of the Diocese of Scranton, who is here with us today. Bishop, your presence means a great deal to Father Pilar's family and the Jesuit community and the university. I'm joined at this celebration of Mass by a large number of priests whose friendship with Scott has meant so very much to each of them. On this stage today, I am joined by Father Stephen Sorovic of the Society of Jesus, who is Scott's cousin and who has been a close and treasured companion of Scott. So welcome all, and let us pray. Almighty God and Father, it is our certain faith 
that your son who died on the cross was raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Grant that through this mystery, your servant Scott, who has gone to his rest in Christ, may share in the joy of his resurrection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace. For if in the eyes of men indeed they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. Beside restful waters, he leads me, he refreshes my soul. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley, valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we 
were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if, while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his Son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The word of the Lord. spirit and life you have the words of everlasting life glory to you word of god lord jesus christ the lord be with you for reading from the holy gospel according to john When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. And then he said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Father Scott Pilars had many loves in his life. And these loves shaped the person, the Jesuit, and the priest that he was. Scott was fond of saying, don't waste love. And it is clear in his own life, he never did. He was well loved by his God and by so many on this earth, in this room. And he loved us in return with a selfless and generous love. A principal love of his life with his family. Scott was a devoted son to his parents, Joan and Ron. He included them in all the major moments of his presidency in Scranton. So many in this very room. And they themselves became part of the Scranton family. Scott loved his sister, Susan, and her husband, Joe. They had a special bond right to the very last moment 
of his life on earth, a bond that will continue. He loved his nephew, Joey, and his niece, Carly, and his grandniece, Marin. To Father Pilar's family, all of us want you to know that our prayers and support will be with you, not only this morning, <clears throat> but in the days and weeks ahead. A central love of Scott's life was his love for the church. He deeply believed in the mission of Catholic education, and he proudly proclaimed it. He loved the local church here in the Diocese of Scranton. He had great affection and admiration for our bishop, Bishop Joseph Bambera, who has honored Scott and all of us by his presence here today. Scott deeply admired the work of this diocese and the commitment of its priests, men and women religious, and dedicated laypersons. And Scott cherished his friendship with Bishop Bambera and with so many of his brother priests in this room. He was so grateful to you for sharing with him and the people of God the gift of your priesthood. Scott Pilars loved the Society of Jesus, and he loved being a priest and a Jesuit. He had many good friends within the Society of Jesus, and he cherished those friendships. He took to his own the spiritual legacy of St. Ignatius of Loyola and found great satisfaction in exploring the thought of the 16th century Jesuit poet, St. Robert Southall, about whom he wrote so engagingly. One might say that Scott's connection to the Society of Jesus was preordained as he was born on July 31st, the feast of St. Ignatius of Loyola. His good friend, Father Joseph McShane, former president of this university and now president at Fordham, wrote this week in reflecting on Scott's life, what an iconic son of St. Ignatius, a pastor and a teacher to the end. Father Pilars was a deep believer in the value of Jesuit education and was one of our country's most articulate spokespersons for this cause. Scott once wrote that Jesuit education is a priceless, ineluctable mystery, and ultimately the work of God's good grace. The very Reverend Joseph O'Keefe, provincial of the USA East Province of the Society of Jesus, sends his deep gratitude today to Scott's family for the gift of Scott to the Jesuits and to the church. Father O'Keefe's genuine pastoral care and concern for Scott over these past months meant a great deal to Scott. Father O'Keefe is represented here today by Father Jack Hanwell, socius of our province. And we are so grateful, Jack, for your presence here today. And Scott loved his friends. He was blessed with faithful friends from his Georgetown days and his years at Marquette and Georgetown Prep. And he was blessed by his friendships forged here in our valley with faculty and staff and parents and students here at Scranton. He had deep, abiding friendships with his trustees, with his board chairs, past and present and his cabinet, the members of his team. And he knew the loyal, faithful friendship of Tom McKinnon that was such a rock in his life. And Scott loved the University of Scranton. He loved its mission and he loved its people. He loved us so much that he came back for another term as president proudly proclaiming in his second inaugural address in 2018, I love this place. And so he did. And all of us are the beneficiaries of that love and devotion 
both institutionally and personally. He loved the place that he called in his first inauguration speech, the miracle in the mountains. But it turned out he was the miracle who inspired us to be our best selves. And I can personally tell you how deeply happy he was when he learned that his successor as president of the University of Scranton would be Father Joseph Marina, who is here with us today. Joe Scott was overjoyed at your selection, and he knew that his beloved university was in good hands. And that belief gave him extraordinary peace in these past few weeks. And Father Pilar's love Scranton and Northeastern Pennsylvania and its people. He found a home here. He loved the sense of family and faith here and the fact that people look out for one another. He had a number of good and loyal friends here, many of whom are in this room this morning. Father Pilar's received much love and care and attention from the medical community here in our area. On behalf of the Society of Jesus, I thank the amazing staff at Geisinger Community Medical Center and the doctors who gave him such good care, Dr. Martin Penitar, Dr. Louis de Naples, Dr. Laura Nicholas, Nichols. Father was especially delighted when coming upon a nurse or a doctor who was a graduate of the University of Scranton. It made his day. And the Jesuit community and Father Pilar's family will always be grateful to Dr. Jay Bannon. Jay, your care and friendship for Scott was so generous and so genuine. Your care was a great comfort to us and to Scott, even to the last moment on this earth. These were the great loves in Scott's life. And today we gather in the sadness of our loss and in the hope of our faith. In the second scripture reading from St. Paul, we hear these powerful words, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. And that is our hope, that we be truly nourished today by the love of God and one another. Nourished by a faith that tells us that death is not the end. A faith that tells us that love and friendship transcend space and time. A faith that tells us that our experience of love here on earth points to an eternal life already begun in us, but not yet completed or understood. This Mass today is the celebration of the life of a good man. And perhaps if there is one guiding image that somehow captures the blessings of Scott Pilars' life, it is that of the teacher. Teaching was the source of his fulfillment and happiness. He once said at the conclusion of every English class that he ever taught, he would quote the words of the novelist Philip Roth, to my mind, there is nothing quite like the classroom in all of life. Scott saw the amazing possibilities for the transformation of lives in education and the belief that education ultimately reveals to us, in Hopkins' phrase, a world charged with the grandeur of God. Scott was the true teacher in every aspect of his life, in the way that he lived his life with such genuineness. And so what lessons have we learned from this good teacher? How has God blessed us through his life? Let me suggest three lessons of Scott's exemplary life with help from the words of St. John's Gospel, from lines from the poetry of 16th century Robert Southall and contemporary Mary Oliver, and of course, the words of the bard of New Jersey, Bruce Springsteen. 
The first lesson that Scott Pilars taught us was the lesson of faith. Scott truly lived the motto, ad maiorum dei gloria, for the greater glory of God. Scott truly believed that everything he did in his life was directed to a higher purpose. All of his life decisions were guided by that focus of faith. Scott believed that all of us are born for God, that our true home is in heaven. He taught us that one's ultimate happiness in life depends on how fully one accepts that truth. He taught all of us, and in particular young people, that this world, as inviting, as exciting as it may seem, is not all there is. In the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius of Loyola, a work that is at the heart of the University of Scranton and every Jesuit school, Ignatius writes about the place of the world in what is called the principle and foundation. And Ignatius writes these words, which I believe were embraced and exemplified by Scott. The goal of our life is to live with God forever. God gave us life because he loves us. So we should not fix our desires on health or sickness, wealth or poverty, success or failure, a long life or a short one. Our only desire and our one choice should be this, I want and I choose what better leads to God's deepening life in me. For Scott, that perspective was very real and it guided the decisions he made. It was Scott's faith that led him to discover and pursue his mission on earth of educating young people and leading them to God. Perhaps no experience in Scott's life best exemplified his faith more than his battle with ALS. Scott once told his Jesuit community that all of his life, especially in his years as president, he was used to being in charge and able to control things and outcomes as far as any administrator can. Scott went on to say that what he was learning from God was that Scott was not in control and that his life was in God's hands every day, every moment. That is why I believe that the words of today's gospel are so poignant. Jesus tells Peter, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands. Someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Scott said this signifying, Jesus said this signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, follow me. Jesus signified to Peter that he would die by crucifixion and his death would glorify God. Scott's endurance through ALS, his ability to never allow a crippling disease to diminish his effectiveness as president, his lack of complaining about his fate, his upbeat spirit, his sheer courage, they were all his crucifixion. And through his endurance and his suffering, through his life and through his death, Scott has given glory to God because through it all, he heard the words Jesus spoke to Peter, follow me. And Scott followed his Lord through his suffering, death, and resurrection. In the words of St. Ignatius, he found God in all things, even in ALS. For there, he found the God who accompanied him in his struggle, a God in whom he was able to turn over his pain and make of it the means to his union with God. Monsignor Joseph Quinn from the Diocese of Scranton, a good friend of Scott, sent me this quote this week 
as he prayed about Scott's life. The author is unknown, but I thought the words speak to the lessons we have learned from Scott's battle with ALS. Why were the saints saints? Because they were cheerful when it was difficult to be cheerful. Patient when it was difficult to be patient. And because they pushed on when they wanted to stand still and keep silent when they wanted to talk and were agreeable when they wanted to be disagreeable. That was all. It was quite simple and it always will be. A lesson taught to us by Scott. And here is a second lesson from Scott the teacher. Embrace life. Never waste love. Appreciate the beauty of this world and the beauty of love and friendship. Scott admired the poetry of Mary Oliver and loved her poem entitled Sometimes. In that poem, Oliver writes, instructions for living a life. Pay attention, be astonished, tell about it. Anyone who knew Scott Pilar's knew that he lived those words. His attention to the gifts God gave him in his life, his ability to be astonished in gratitude for those gifts, and his ability to tell about it in such eloquent ways. That was the rhythm of Scott's life. Whether he was talking about friends or family, or the poetry of Robert Southall or Mary Oliver, or the benefits of a liberal arts education, the lyrics to a Springsteen ballad, whether it be the people of Scranton or the beauty of Wildwood, he paid attention. He was astonished and he told us about it. Because in telling us these stories, he was telling us the story of God traced in his life. And the third lesson in Scott's life was this. We are called on this earth to build one another up. We're called to support each other. Strengthened and loved by God, it is our task in this world to strengthen and love one another. This belief was at the foundation of his vision of a Catholic Jesuit university, a place where one could discover, discover the extraordinary grace and goodness of God in the ordinary a place where we have an obligation to look out for one another and to build each other up. The quote from Robert Southall that Scott had chiseled into the walls of the DeNaples Student Center were words that he desired be chiseled in our hearts as well. Not where I breathe, but where I love, I live. We will always associate those words with Scott Pilar's because he believed them so deeply. Building one another up, loving each other, is the true measure of who we are. In his song, Into the Fire, Bruce Springsteen wrote, may your strength give us strength. May your faith give us faith. May your hope give us hope. May your love give us love. In Scott's vision of a Catholic Jesuit university, that's how it's supposed to work. My strength gives you strength. Your faith gives me faith. My hope gives you hope. Your love gives me love. And today all of us truly believe that Scott's incredible strength, strong faith, undying hope, and selfless love gave all of us strength, faith, hope, and love. And for those gifts of Scott's life, we are deeply grateful today. In our Christian faith, death is not the end. Through the resurrection of Jesus, love has conquered death forever. Life for Scott has changed, not ended. Love and friendship cannot be overcome by death. Death never has the last word, not for Jesus and not for Scott and not for any of us. 
your love and friendship for Scott, your son, your brother, your uncle, your cousin, your teacher, your colleague, your president, your Jesuit brother does not end today. Scott, now gone before us in the presence of the God he has loved all of his life, will continue to be part of our lives, encouraging us to greater faith, to build one another up, to pay attention to God's gifts in our lives, to be astonished, to never waste love. I already referred to the words of one of Scott's favorite Mary Oliver poems entitled Sometimes. And in that poem, she wrote these words. And I think now of Scott as I read them. Death waits for me, I know it, around one corner or another. This doesn't amuse me, but neither does it frighten me. After the rain, I went back into the field of sunflowers. It was cool and I was anything but drowsy. I walked slowly and listened to the crazy roots in the drenched earth, laughing and growing. When Scott passed into the arms of God on Wednesday afternoon, his sister Susan uttered words that have stayed with me ever since that moment, and they've been a great source of consolation to me. At that moment, she simply said, he's free. And that says everything about our faith and our belief that Scott indeed now is free. Free from the confinement of his body that was so limited in recent months. Free from worry and suffering and pain and anxiety. Free now to love God in his presence forever. To paraphrase Oliver, after this rain, he goes to a place of light and refreshment, a field of sunflowers in Oliver's imagining, and Scott loved flowers, a place where he will be anything but drowsy, but alert and sustained by God's light and presence forever, astonished, listening and laughing and growing. He's free. We thank God for the gift of his life and the blessing that it was to walk this road with him. He's free. And how else could I end this homily except for the way that Scott ended every major address and homily that he gave here? And wherever you are, I invite you to say the words along with me. May God bless you. May God bless Catholic and Jesuit education. And may God bless the University of Scranton. Let us stand now. Let us stand now to offer our prayers together. We come together confident in the knowledge that nothing can separate us from the love of God, a love that is unconditional. With this confidence, we bring our prayers before our loving Creator. In baptism, Scott was brought to a faith which would inspire him and others to serve God and humankind. In thanksgiving for this ever-deepening faith, which he lived so openly and generously among us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Believing firmly that he was called by God to become a Jesuit priest, Scott entered a way of life that offered love 
and service to all he encountered, especially his students. In gratitude for the gifts he shared with us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Scott was a mentor to generations of students, colleagues, and alumni, a brother to his Jesuit family, an inspiring friend and font of wisdom to a community of persons of all faiths and walks of life, locally, nationally, and internationally. May he now find himself in the hands of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We lift up our brothers and sisters in faith who suffer from illnesses, hardship, adversity, hunger, and pain, especially those with ALS. May the grace of God lighten their burdens and bring them peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. From childhood, Scott shared great love and affection for his family. We now offer our prayers to Scott's family. Ron and Joan, Susan, Joseph, Carly, Joey, and Marin. That the faith and memory of a beloved son, brother, uncle, and great uncle sustain the Pilar's family. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As Scott did throughout his life, we pray for his relatives and friends who have gone before us. May they rest in eternal peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, with faith and confidence, we offer these petitions to you. Hear our prayers and grace us with your mercy. We ask this in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. As we prepare to offer our gifts this day, I wanted to just let people know that the chalice that we are using today uh, is a chalice that was frequently used um, by Father Walter Chiswick, servant of God, whose canonization cause proceeds uh, in Rome. Uh, Father Chiswick, as you may know, was in prison for his faith uh, for many years. Um, he is a native of northeastern Pennsylvania, a Polish-American uh, priest and Jesuit of our province. And so today, uh, we use uh, his chalice of this sainted Jesuit.
pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, O Lord, on your servant Scott, for whom we offer you this sacrifice of praise, humbly entreating that reconciled with you through these devoted offices, he may merit to rise again to life through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by that same Spirit to graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Ignatius of Loyola, St. Robert Southall, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, 
advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people that you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Scott, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters, to and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. And through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. And now let us pray together the prayer that Jesus himself has taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And now let us in a safe fashion offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. And Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, through your death, gave life to the world. Free us by this, your most holy body and blood, from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us always faithful to your commandments and never let us, even for a single moment, to be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
and let us pray. Renewed by this life-giving sacrament, we pray, O Lord, that the soul of our brother Scott, to whom you gave a part in your covenant, may be purified by the power of this mystery and rejoice without end in the peace of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. And please be seated. thank Bishop Bambara for your presence here today. The priests who can celebrated this Mass, Jesuits, priests from the Diocese of Scranton and other religious communities, our musicians and our singers on the direction of Stephen Murphy. We thank the Facilities Department for setting up this space for us. The Campus Ministries staff for handling all of the logistics of today's Mass. Our electors, and those who assisted at the altar, all those who worked as ushers during yesterday's viewing and at today's mass, the IT staff and those who coordinated the sound today and the live streaming of our mass, the university communications staff, the university police department, our family and the Society of Jesus is grateful today for all of the medical personnel who assisted Scott on his journey with such great care. The doctors and nurses and staff of the Geisinger Community Medical Center, his aides who cared for him here on campus, the personnel at the ALS clinic at Johns Hopkins. We are grateful as well for all those who attended yesterday's viewing and those present for this mass this morning and all those in the University of Scranton family who are watching the live streaming of this Mass. And if you'll permit me a final just thank you to God. For the love we've known through Scott, there would be little use in asking questions and asking for answers to questions that we would never get. So let's bask in what we know. No matter which part of the family you're from, be it New Jersey or Georgetown, the society or Scranton, we knew Scott, we loved Scott. We know that where Scott loved, he lived. We know that where Scott loved, we lived. So in gratitude for the life and love we have known, we continue in that life and continue in that love until together again. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. 
May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet Scott again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Scott in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you have bestowed upon him in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Scott, may the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. May choirs of angels welcome you and lead you to the bosom of Abraham. And where Lazarus is poor no longer, may you find eternal rest. In the sure hope of the resurrection, we take leave of our brother Scott and let us go in peace.
So 